We're going to talk about how to raise feminist boys. There's a few reasons why we want to raise feminist boys. And obviously, everything that's happened recently, what has been really in the news lately is the, the sexual harassment experienced by almost all women. We want to raise boys and men who respect women and treat them well. Number two, we want them to be happy. We want them to know that if they want to cry, they can cry. They're allowed to be worried, so you don't have to have this toxic masculinity that will destroy you you can't get your feelings out you know we keep telling boys oh come on shrug it off you know be a man you know boys don't cry all this rubbish and uh, and we don't want that for our for our kids and the, the third reason is what if your boy doesn't grow up to be the kind of stereotypical real man what if they grow up to be different if you don't teach them that that is okay you basically teach them to hate themselves and why would you do that to your child here are our top tips on how to raise feminist boys. There's no such thing as girls and boys toys. So basically give your child an opportunity to find what they like to play with. Give them a doll, give them a car. If they like the car, fine. If they like the doll, fine. Mia didn't really like the dolls, but that's fine. It's not really important that they play with dolls. It's important that they do, that they, they have a play where they nurture and they be kind and they look after something. And he loves his soft toys. That's teaching them that kind of compassion and empathy and looking after something, which is these female traits that we need to encourage in our boys. And also make sure that they had different role models. Noah's granddad uh, has been looking after Noah since Noah was well born like as soon as I went back to work and then like obviously Ben is a stay-at-home dad you know and they do all the stuff you know they do the lunches for them dress them brush their teeth you know it's, it's yeah. all this they just learn that what they see is normal and yeah. um, to have different kind of men in your life in different roles is really important for them to know that it's okay and choose a good man to have in your life as well that's good as well <laughs> and also Helps. Like, let them choose. The boys' clothes are rubbish. They really are. They are so ugly. It's, it's only just dinosaurs or trucks. superheroes or trucks um, and, and no colour. I mean, Noah loves the, the sequence ones that change. So And basically, small children, until they're about seven, they've, like, physiologically, they're the same. I mean, obviously, they have different genitals, but there's no reason why kids... At least kids under the yeah. age of seven would need specific girls or boys clothes. Just be mindful what they watch on TV. Like TV and films are like famously super sexist. There's twice as many male characters as there are female characters. Um, even animals are gendered and like why? And they're almost always men. Paw Patrol has got seven dogs one of them is a girl and she's like super girly and smaller than the other dogs and like a little princess why is this the case peppa pig <laughs> it's so sexist like the girls are girly the boys are liking you know dinosaurs and ew, pink and the daddy pig is like useless and it, it is terrible for gender um, role models make sure that at least you have a if they want to watch this crap. The, the girls in the films and TV, they tend to be princesses, moms, maids, evil stepmothers, you know, these kind of like non-active roles. And, you know, there's, there's a reason why Frozen was, was such a big deal, because it was like girls not being rescued by guys. They're still princesses. Mm. They make their own choices. I'm not saying that it's not okay to watch, you know, Paw Patrol or Cars or like these kind of boys films, but just make sure that you balance it out with, with TV shows and films with, with strong female leads and just to give them the, the kind of the other side of things. Books as well, if you think about like Zog, Julia Donaldson, love you, love her books, but Zog, you've got a, you've got Princess Pearl, so okay, so she's a princess, but she's, she wants to be a doctor. Uh, and then like her uncle says, no, girls can't be doctors. And she's like, well, why not? And, and then she cures the king. So obviously she's a strong female yeah. lead. Um, like you, we really had to think about when we were talking yeah. about like, what are the books with, the, with where, where there's strong girls that are kind of the heroes of the story. And it's like, 
there's Matilda, there's Pippi Longstocking, um, there's there's Zoff, there's, there's Megan Mogg. But there's like, we were really kind of having to think. And normally we can't get them to be in the camera at all. And now that we don't want them here. <laughs> Tell me about uh, boys and girls, Noah and Leo. Boys and girls are the same. Yeah. Boys and girls are the same, dude. Banana cakes. Uh, we really love the stories for boys who dare to be different and good night stories for rebel girls they basically they got like a one pager uh, stories about boys who dare to be different for men from history like david attenborough or you know dynamo <laughs> actually we got the boys who dare to be different first and we were reading it and he was loving it and he was like why is there no girls in this? And I was like, oh man, I'm being sexist mummy here. So we got the good night stories for rebel girls and now we're reading both. Challenge yourself. It's, you have to look at how you talk about men and women. You have to look at how you talk about boys and girls. Do you always brace for girls for being pretty and kind? Do you always brace for boys being, you know, strong or fast or brave? And, and because they learn from you. Think about mm. how you talk, talk about yourself. Do you always talk about your looks and weight? And, and um, Never. <laughs> what, what is important? Because they get all that from home. And challenge them, because they are gonna come home with bullshit. Like Mio came home, I think he was four, and he just came home and said, um, girls are not as good as boys. And obviously, <laughs> I try not to be shocked because it's not it's not helpful for you to be telling them off like no you can't say that because they're not saying that with the malicious intent they're not saying they that because they're, they're saying, mean. Yeah. But he, somebody at school told him that and and what you need to do is to have a conversation like why do you think that is and talk talk about people they know talk about girls they know boys they know like do you really think Eliza is not as good as Theo you know you you want to kind of bring it to real life talk about famous strong girls in films or books and that's why it's important that you watch those films and read those yeah. books that they have an idea so it's it's just important that you have those conversations with them or if they talk about girls colors or boys yeah. sports or you know whatever yeah make sure the mummy likes football yeah that helps and yeah take them to see girls football you know yeah fabulous women's team and i think one of the most important thing is that you do have to uh teach them to talk about feelings they, they've done experiments on girls and boys and at quite a young age the boys are not as good at, at naming their emotions and especially negative emotions and that's why they kind of when they have a negative feeling they become angry because mm. that's the, they, they're not able to process those feelings and that's because we are not teaching them how to and that's why boys and men sometimes act violently in the situations where the feeling might be sadness or fear because they haven't been taught how to how to deal with those feelings and it, it also it, it can it can lead to to mental health issues it can lead to substance abuse because that's all They've been taught to just keep all their, their emotions inside, inside of them. And that's really sad. And why would you want that for your child? Mm. Do, us, do, do us all a favor and raise some feminist boys, right? I have booked Noah to go on a Easter football school. The last one <laughs> Are you went, mad? The last one went very uh, smoothly. Not. not. Uh, he cried the whole time. And then I've also booked him for after school as football you're, club. As you're being... So, two minutes. Two minutes. Look, they're being in camera. Oh. Okay, so yeah, so that's my guilty mum moment. So we'll see how that goes. Good luck. <laughs> so we dyed Mia's hair blue. Hey, and please. based on <laughs> some of the looks we're getting from other parents, that's a mummy fairly itself. So, um, you know how they say in like a hair dye that you're supposed to do a patch test? Like, you know, yeah. Nobody does that no. ever. 
we didn't do that. For the, for the, I did feel a bit bad. I was like, what if he would get like some horrible uh, allergic reaction? But then I remembered we already actually dyed his hair once and he didn't. So, and actually it was the, yeah, it was the second time we were dyeing his hair that I would even thought Consider of reading the face <laughs> Right, I think we're going to have to go to the tree house now or, or they'll be, they'll be murdered. So, see you soon. Thanks for watching.